so thanks, Bob. Yeah, I'm uh, one of the uh, PDM techs for our inflow division. We're a computer-aided technology company, as it says, but, you know, we share offices and things like that. So you're not really talking to separate people. It just might be somebody who's more PDM-focused rather than SolidWorks-focused. But a lot of us kind of, you know, have knowledge in both areas. This is going to be kind of a quick discussion on the basics of Office integration with PDM. So we all know we can put Office files in the vault, but there's a little bit more beyond just the ability to put Office files in the vault that we want to talk about today. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk about the first kind of major thing when you talk Office integration, and that's going to be the Office add-in. So what we have, and you're going to see the bottom kind of screenshot of the ribbon that I'm about to discuss, this ribbon called the add in officially various names uh, you'll hear it referred to but it's very similar to the solidworks add-in so if anybody's familiar with that this is going to give you very similar functionality so it's going to provide an integrated as it says pdm ribbon in word excel and powerpoint and what this ribbon is going to allow you to do is perform vault commands and basically view file info you can see the various vault commands that are available down there. Some you'd expect to see check out, check in. Others are, you know, a little bit more obscure but very useful, such as this uh, select in Windows Explorer here that I'll kind of have that descending circle on. So if I'm trying to indicate indicate something on screen here, guys, I'll go ahead and use that circle. So this is actually PDM Pro only functionality. Now we can definitely put Office files in a PDM standard vault, but we're not going to get this ribbon. So some of the convenience of this ribbon is, you know, it's not available in PDM standard, but all this functionality is going to be there, just not in the ribbon. So when it comes to PDM Pro, actually all these PDM license types are supported, you know, including viewers. Viewers, of course, they're going to be limited by their functionality. They're not going to be able to check out files or check in files, but they can still, for example, a common viewer functionality is to look at the data card. So there's a show card button that you'd see on the ribbon. And we'll actually take a look at this in the program, various programs, like I said, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint in just a second here. So how do you install this add-in? Now there's actually two ways to install it. You can use either the standalone PDM install wizard, which is what I'm showing over on the right here. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure this box is checked. Now a lot of people aren't gonna install using this standalone PDM install wizard. A lot of people are a little bit more familiar with this install wizard, which just came on screen. This is, of course, the SOLIDWORKS installation manager. Now within this, you're gonna have some SOLIDWORKS PDM client options and similar set of potential add-ins there. You can see the first one is Microsoft Office integration. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that's checked in you know, either method of installation, depending on how it was installed um, at your company, you, know, you may not have credentials to check that box or it could have been installed by an admin image and you need to modify the image to get the add-in there. But go ahead and talk to your ad or your admin, excuse me, to get the add-in and uh, you know, you can have that functionality. It's really available to everybody and it's, you know, obviously no extra cost or anything like that. So you might as well turn it on. It's not really going to slow off this down or anything like that. It's, you know, it's a pretty sleek little add-in, but it's always going to be there. And once you find a use for it, you know, I think you'll be glad that it's installed. So on screen here, we have this box. Now I've already got the PDM client installed, so I can't check that box, but this is the selection you're gonna make preceding the selection here. So you wanna make sure your PDM client add-in is checked. Now most people should have that on already, and then go ahead and check the Microsoft Office integration. That is the screen that you'll see after this screen. Now after this add-in is installed, the ribbon is gonna be auto-added to Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. So there's really nothing else you're gonna to have to do beyond that and you know like i said this can be installed using an admin image so you can make sure all your users get it um, i think most people are at least vaguely aware of the add-in but i'm not sure as many people use it as we might expect but um you know obviously this uh, webex is part of trying to change that so what options are there in the add-in so we can really do everything um, that we'd expect to be able to do in the solidworks add-in aside from a few solidworks specific functions but we can check out check in, undo the checkout. Now, the nice thing about that is if you accidentally edit a document, you know, you open a document from PDM, and I'll actually go ahead and show this in a little bit, but if you edit a document without checking it out, PDM is actually going to preserve the changes you've made if you check out the document before closing it. So, 
know, we've all made that mistake of editing a read-only document. With the PDM add-in turned on, um, excuse me, the Office add-in, I should be more specific, because this functionality actually works exactly the same with the SolidWorks add-in. So if you make that mistake of opening a SolidWorks file, read-only, make some edits, as long as you can check it out using the add-in, you're in good shape. Now, this isn't something you want to do on purpose, because if somebody else checks the file out before you realize that you only have it open in a read-only capacity, then you might get in trouble. But it does save you if you accidentally open a file, read-only, make some edits, and then realize you need to check it out. So you can also get latest version and do a Git version. So it's very handy to kind of leaf through earlier versions of the document. You know, if you've got five versions of an Office file or an Excel file or something, you know, you can go through the versions and kind of see the development of the document since it's the beginning of its life in PDM. Now, I mentioned showing the data card, this one here. Now, this works exactly the same as the SOLIDWORKS add-in data card button does. It's going to show you the data card and allow you to make changes to it if the file's checked out, of course. Now, the same thing applies if you accidentally make some changes to the data card read-only. You know, you can, you can fix that. Change state, of course. We can search and we can select in Windows Explorer. So this is a handy one here. That's actually this little green icon right there. You know, a lot of the times um, we do a search and we find a file, but we don't really know, you know, where it is in the vault. You know, you can see the path of the file and stuff, but oftentimes it's really long. This is handy because it's going to take you directly to the file in Windows Explorer. So you click on that button, opens up Windows Explorer, and there's the file. And likely that file is going to be grouped together with other useful files in your vault. So if you found one, you, know, you could say you you found them all, I guess. It's also going to show you local version, local over latest, so you guys are aware of the PDM um, syntax where it'll show you what version you have local, and then a slash, and then what version is actually the latest in the vault. So this is handy because, like I, you know, I mentioned earlier about, you know, you could be looking at a file, somebody else could check it out. This is a sort of different scenario, but if somebody else has a file checked out and you are looking at it, and that user decides to check in a new version, you know, you want to get those changes. So the nice thing about having the add-in enabled is, you know, you're going to, you're going to see that, okay, this local over latest, for example, you know, instead of being four of four, meaning I have the latest four, it might say four of five, meaning some other user just checked in version five, and now I need to get version five using this get version button right here. So, you know, these are kind of just uh, screenshots of the buttons, obviously, but I'll show you guys where those exist in PDM, uh, the actual ribbon, in a second here when I open it up. So you can also see who's got the file checked out and the workflow state. So, you know, a lot of people control their Office documents using a workflow. So you can see where this file is in the workflow, whether it's released, work in process, pending approval, things like that. So we can actually demonstrate the functionality using this PowerPoint itself. So where's the ribbon? It's hiding right there, SOLIDWORKS PDM. If I click on it, it's kind of, you know, grayed out. There's not really any options here. Why is that? That's because the file hasn't been saved into the vault just yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go File. Actually, I think I need to save as here. I'm going to browse to my vault. Same as, you know, any other sort of save operation into the vault. I have an Office Files fol or folder, excuse me, here. And inside that, I've got a PPT folder. Let's go ahead and hit save. Into the vault it goes. And now you can see that, okay, there are now options that are available to us because the file's been added to the vault. So this is going to work the same as, like I said, the SOLIDWORKS add-in in that way. If the file's not in the vault, this add-in kind of doesn't really function in any way. So right now you can see I've got the file checked out. I'm admin right there. And I can check it in right there. And here's my check-in dialog box, just like you're familiar with with SOLIDWORKS files. So if I want to, I can put a comment, initial check-in, whatever it might be. So into the vault it goes. And now it's, of course, you know, read-only. And it's in the vault. I can change state, do a transition. And actually, this is going to get it into the, the workflow that I want it to be in here. So I'll hit OK. And now you can see that this can be sent through this no approval required transition. I can submit it for review, one of the two. 
Um, so the file, you know, like I said, again, mirroring the SOLIDWORKS add-in functionality. So let me show you guys this uh, cool little select in Windows Explorer button. So if you do a search to find your file, and you can actually see that there's a search button right there, and you're not sure where it is in the vault, well, you can always click on this button, and then up comes this. It's going to take you to the location in the vault right there. So we also have, you know, the ability to get earlier versions. So I can get grab version one. There's version two right there. If I send this file through the workflow, let's do no approval required. Let's just say looks good. And now it's actually got a revision. So we're seeing that information as well. So I can actually look at that reflected here. This is revision A. So you can rev control these files. You know, that, that functionality is available regardless of the add-in being turned on or not, but it's a little bit easier to handle with the add-in turned on. So, you know, this is kind of equivalent to a SOLIDWORKS designer not having the add-in. It kind of slows them down in a number of ways. You know, they have to go to their file in Explorer, check it out, open it, save it, close it, check it in. So that's a large number of steps. Whereas with the add-in, you can open the file checked in, you can open the file checked out. You can really, it doesn't really matter the initial, you know, act you, you do to the file. The add-in allows you to make your modifications once the file's been opened, regardless of how it's been opened. So this provides the person who's using Word documents in the vault more heavily than SOLIDWORKS documents the same functionality. They're not, you know, forced to go to the file, check it out, open it, save it, close it, check it in. Like I said, a number of steps. They can do all of that right here. So of course, like I said, I can check the file out, make a quick change to it, and we can go from there. So there's a few other things to mention. Now I have this show card button. So if I click on this, up comes the data card for this file. You can see it's got a document number that's being auto-generated. Auto the title, Office Integration Basics is there, created by, uh, that's actually another info tech there, Emily. Yesterday was the final date I selected there. Um, but you can actually make changes, again, similar to SOLIDWORKS right there. So if I check the file out, show the card, I can make a change, change the date, add a subject, add keywords. These can be, well, in this case, they are linked to the properties of the file. So if I go here, File, Properties, you can see that, oh, okay, there's my title, there's my author, company, and there's subjects, keywords, things like that. So I can pull these properties and I can utilize these properties if I want. That's certainly an option. And you guys are seeing that reflected in the data card here. But I can take it a step further, too, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But let me actually show you guys the functionality in the other Office file types. So I'm going to go select in Explorer. Another handy thing that this will do is just open up Explorer to the spot you want to be in, like I said. So it's Office files in this case. There's some Word documents. Let me go ahead and open up some blogs I've been working on here. And you can see this one is one of two, so I don't have the latest version local. Let me go ahead and open it. And the add-in is really going to reflect the same thing I see there, right? There's my SOLIDWORKS PDM add-in. Looks about the same as it does in PowerPoint. Local version is one of two. So information is being reflected there. You don't really need to do much inside Explorer itself besides the initial browse to the file, because like I keep saying, if I do, for example, file new, just do a blank document, this guy's not in the vault. The PDM add-in is still active, just not quite in its fully active state just yet because it doesn't, this file doesn't have any connection to, to my vault. So that is a Word document. The ribbon, like I said, looks exactly the same, really. Let me go back one level, and you can see I've got an Excel folder as well. So there's one more bit of functionality I want to demonstrate. This is kind of bare bones here just to demonstrate what can be done, but I think it's easy to extrapolate what you see here to, you know, potential functionality at your company. And this works with the other file types as well. So I've got my Excel folder. I've got this document called example. Let me go ahead and open it. And again, there's my ribbon. Looks about the same. But what I can actually do here is go to my data card. Now, let me, let me take a step back to correlate this to the other file. This is the same sort of summary block of properties, right? 
but I can also utilize the custom block of properties just to make my own custom properties, similar to what most people have done inside SOLIDWORKS, right? Most people have custom properties like description, revision, author, date, whatever it may be. You may actually want, so this is very similar, you know, maybe you could draw the correlation to values on a drawing title block. You can actually affect the values in the body of a office document itself using um, linked properties in a very similar way. So I've got this button again, show card, and you can see I have this link property example right here, and I can type something in here. So this might be, I've seen, uh, you know, people use this to actually fill out, you know, ECO documents and have a data card for their ECO documents, or just, you know, populate cells in an Excel document for, for any number of reasons. But this is just a quick little example. So I have this field here. Let me show you where I'm at just to make sure everybody's seeing that right there. So there's my, you know, A. Bornstein property you saw in the summary block, but this, again, is a custom property block. So this is one I made up. You know, let's just type in whatever value you need to store in Excel. Body, we'll say body. Right. Hit OK. And it goes right there. So it's not too hard to set up. See this update. This is actually, I was trying to figure out when this has been added, update linked fields, I think this is actually exclusive to 2019. I do not think it was in 2018. I actually just recently upgraded uh, the other day, so I haven't gone back to 18 to check yet. But this updates those linked fields, right? So you can have that checked. And this was actually an enhancement request that I think has been fulfilled in 2019. I was doing a little research last night when I, when I saw this. I think that's an improvement over the previous functionality, which, if I remember correctly, required, you know, setting up a little bit of an auto-refresh macro. So this is handy. I like that a lot. I need to look into it a little more, so I apologize if I give you guys wrong information on that. But I think, you know, you, you most likely want that checked. I'm having a hard time imagining why you wouldn't want that checked. Anyway, let's do a quick, quick and dirty uh, lesson on how to get that set up. Basically, you know, this will be for the PDM admins watching. I'm going to go fast here and then there'll be some time for questions. So if I open up my admin tool and I go to my data card, and that's actually recently used office card right there, and it looks like that. So there's my link property example, and I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this down. Let's do control C, control V, drop those guys back on there. This is just gonna be, like I said, as quick and dirty as you can get, but I think this will at least give you guys a basis. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable. We're going to call this one example two. Go ahead and do new attribute. This is going to be a custom property, and I'll call this one example two as well. And this needs to be um, in effect for Excel files, and you can do it for the other file types too, but this is enough for now. There's my variable. Hit OK. Now let's go ahead and go over here and make sure I apply that variable. I need to select example two as opposed to example. That's all I'll do there. Go ahead and save the data card. So that's that. Let's go ahead and go back to Excel now. Now my document is checked out, so I can make this change. First thing I'm going to do is formulas tab, define a name. Define name, let's call this one example two right there. Okay. Then I'm going to go file, properties advanced properties. Now you can call this one example two as well, link to content, and then choose example two right there after you, you know, defined a cell with that name. Hit OK. And uh, that should be it. Let's go ahead and save it. Now let's see if it worked. Moment of truth, test, SolidWorks PDM, show card. Good. Ooh, sigh relief for me. So that, that worked. Um, it was Pretty quick, like I said, I don't know if everyone caught everything there, but there's a, a, a number of blogs. I know uh, Inflow slash CHI has a blog on how to do this. I'm going to throw out a name. I think the person, my colleague who wrote it is uh, Clay Mosier. You guys want to Google that? I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've checked that, but that's the name of, I believe, uh, the Inflow tech who, who wrote that blog. Uh, so that should uh, get you there with Google. So anyway, you can kind of extrapolate how this functionality might be useful for various file types, or well, not various, I should say, you know, the, the office file types um, in conjunction with this add-in here, and you can get a lot more functionality and 
perhaps you know expand your use of Office files inside of PDM. So, guys, our questions at this time. If not, I'd like to thank everybody spending some time with us. Andrew, thank you very much for the time. That was I actually learned some stuff this morning which I didn't know was in there. I thought that was pretty cool, uh, especially with the the linking of the cells back to the data card and backwards and forth. I I really like that. I'm, I'm definitely going to incorporate that into some of the stuff I do. So. Yeah, well, pretty handy. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, thanks for the time. Oh, not a problem. Thanks, everybody, for attending. And we still have another two and a half weeks of presentations for you guys. So feel free to go to www.cati.com, go to the Design Innovation Month page, and find other presentations that you can attend. Thank you very much.